Welcome to part two of our nodal analysis example. In this video, we're going to look at two things. The first is a technique where we can generate our equations pretty much by inspection, a very quick and accurate way of doing it. And number two, a way of verifying that the results that we get, voltages A, B, and C in this case, are in fact accurate. Right, we want to prove that, verify that, instead of just trusting uh, a calculator, for example. So this technique, this ins inspection technique, requires that all sources be current sources. So if we have voltage sources, we can either use the general approach or we would do source conversions, right? So if we have maybe a series of current sources and only one voltage source, we could take that voltage source, do a source conversion, have all current sources, and then off we would go. All right, so quick recap. How did we um, approach this in the general case? Well, we did a KCL summation at each node. And for example, um, if we looked at node A, we would define currents through the 4 ohm, the 2 ohm, the 8 ohm, and of course we have a fixed current source coming out of there. Um, we could think in terms of um, entering currents in a node as being positive, exiting currents as being negative. We would describe the currents in terms of their Ohm's law equivalence. So for example, the current through the 8 ohm would be VA minus VC divided by that resistance, that 8 ohms. Same thing for the 2 ohm, right? VA minus VB divided by 2. The 4 ohm, this current would just be VA divided by 4 ohm. So when we did that, we would solve this, simplify it, expand it, and so forth. Um, like I said, we come up with an equation that looks something like this. Now, as we go through, you will notice that there is a pattern that develops. So for example, here's our current source, 10 at an angle of zero, right? If I were to look at this node and just say, hey, what current sources do I have attached to this node? This is the sole current source. And it is exiting, so I'm gonna call it negative. There it is, negative 10 at an angle of zero. Now the coefficient for VA, one eighth, one half, one quarter, right? Those are the conductances of the various resistors that we have. So here's our eight ohm resistor. There's the eighth. There's our two ohm resistor, half. There's our four ohm resistor, the quarter. In other words, all the items that we have connected to node A are listed here, all these resistive values. And this makes sense when you recall how we did it. After all, we had a uh, VA minus VC divided by 8 ohms. So that VA over 8 ohms, that piece of it, gives us this. And for here we have VA minus VB divided by 2 ohms. So that VA over 2 part is right there. The VA over 4 gives us the quarter. And of course, back here, it was VA minus VC over 8. So that minus VC over 8 gives us this minus 1 eighth. And the VA minus VB over the two gives us the minus one half. So we notice this pattern, which is essentially, let me look at the node and determine, are there any fixed current sources that feed this node? If they're incoming, we'll treat them as positive. If they're exiting, we'll treat them as negative. And we'll just list them all up. We'll just add them all up. And then we'll look at each node and determine, well, what items are connected to that? What other items, RLC components, are connected to that node? They create the coefficient for that particular node. And then any other nodes that we have, we see if there's anything common between them. And they will show up negative. Again, think VA minus VC. They will show up negative for the other terms. So let's take a look at node B, okay? What do we have in terms of current sources feeding node B? Well, we don't have any, so that's just zero. All right, now what components are attached directly to node B? Well, we've got a 2 ohm, a 1 ohm, and this capacitor at minus J5. So I'm going to leave a little space over here for my VA term. And I'm just going to list these up, right? So I've got my 2 ohm, the 1 ohm, and this capacitor, the minus J5. So that's the coefficient for VB. Now I ask the question, is there anything common between node B and node A? Well, there's the 2 ohm. 
and that's going to show up as negative. Negative one half VB. Excuse me, VA. Turn that into an A. Um, then we would say, well, is there anything common between B and C? Well, there's the one ohm. And again, that will show up negative. Right, one over one for VC. All right, now let's turn our attention to node C. What do we have in terms of fixed current sources out there? Well, there's this entering current, 10 amps. We have this 4 amps at 90 degrees also entering. So I'll just add those together. 10 at an angle of 0, plus 4 at an angle of 90. Now, what RLC items do we have connected to node C? Well, there's the 8, there's the 1, and there's the J10. So I'll just put those all together. Right? There's the 1 over 8. 1 over 1, and 1 over J10 times VC. Now, is there anything common between node C and node A? Well, there's our 8 ohmer again, right? So it's going to show up negative. VA. And then we have the question, is there anything common between C and B? Yes, there's the 1 ohm, so that's again negative for VB. And that's our set of equations. Now, if you go back and look at your notes from the first video, you'll see that these are identical. These are the same equations that we have. So we just follow this sort of pattern. Step one, what do I have in terms of current sources entering or exiting? If they're coming in, they're positive. If they're going out, they're negative. List those up. Then we ask, what components are connected to that node? Okay. They create the coefficients. Then we say, from that node of interest, what's connected between that node and any other node? And those things will create the coefficients for the other uh, node voltages. And we just go through that for each one. So we start off with node A is the node of interest, then node B is the node of interest, then node C is the node of interest. And essentially that will create the major diagonal that we have. So. And there's our major diagonal. Okay. Now, and here we can see the diagonal symmetry perhaps a little bit better than last time. Just drawn a little bit nicer. All right. So you can see there's a minus one half, minus one half, minus one eighth, minus one eighth, minus one, minus one. Everything's beautiful. All right. You have to love it. You have to have diagonal symmetry. And it will also work out that the major diagonal here would be positive and these other coefficients will wind up being negative. Again, because you say something like VA minus VC and that minus is where these things come from. So we take these and we solve. We come up with three node voltages. We come up with a VA. This happens to turn out to be 11 volts at an angle of 72 degrees. VB works out to 23.9 at an angle of 34.6 degrees and VC works out to 31 and a half at an angle of 37.2 degrees. All right, so how do we know those are correct? Now what we could do is simply go back to the original equation. So if I take my, my equation A here and we simplify the coefficients, right? The 1 8th, 1 half, 1 quarter adds up to um, 0 0.875. So this is a negative 10 at an angle of 0 equals 0 0.875 VA. And then we have a minus 0 0.5 for VB. And lastly, minus 0.125 for VC. So you could take the VA and put it in here, and the VB and put it in here, and the VC and put it in there, and see if it all works out to negative 10. But you really wouldn't have proven anything other than the fact that you solved this set of equations correctly. In other words, I don't really know if this set of equations is correct. You know, what if I missed a sign in here somewhere? What if I um, ignored a component accidentally. 
right? So you would only know when you take these numbers and put them in one of the equations that you solve the equation set correctly, right? So how do we go beyond that? Well, essentially what we do is we look at KVL, KCL, and take these numbers and see what they sort of imply in the circuit, right? What, are they, what would they manifest? How would they be manifest in the circuit? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially look over here in this little subsection of it. I'm going to do a KCL summation on VB, all right? Now, if you think of, about this in terms of KVL, it would, it would have to be the case. Here's VA. Here's VB. KVL says, you know, the sum, summation of voltages around a loop has to be zero. So here's VA. Here's VB. This must be pretty much by definition VA minus VB, right? It all has to sum up. Uh, to zero. So let's redraw this. Just that part of it. All right, so we have over here our 4 ohm, the 2 ohm, there's the 1, here's the uh, minus J5 cap, and of course the inductor. Now, we have in our shortened image node A, node B, and node C. I don't really care about the rest of it right now because I want to focus in on node B. I'm going to define some currents. I'm going to say this is current number one, that's current two, and this is current three. So applying KCL at node B, we would say that I1 would have to equal I2 plus I3. Now, what's I1? How do I define I1? All right, we just said that a moment ago. I1 has to be VA minus VB divided by the 2 ohm. Well, we're going to check these VA and VB values, right? So we put in 11 at 72 degrees, we subtract 23.9 at 34.6 degrees, and we divide that by 2 ohms. What do we come up with? All right, well, we come up with 8.28 at an angle of a negative 169 degrees. All right, that's in amps. All right, now, do the same thing for I2. Right, how, do I how do I define uh, I2? Well, that's a little bit easier. I2 is just VB over the capacitor value, minus J5. So I'll plug in my VB value of 23.9 at an angle of 34.6, minus J5 here. And what does that work out to? Well, that works out to 4.78 at an angle of 124.6 degrees, again in amps. And finally, I3. How do I find I3? Well, that's VB minus VC. All right, and we divide that by the impedance in there, which is 1 ohm. So VB is 23.9 at an angle of 34.6. VC is 31.5 at an angle of 37.2, divide that by 1, and we come up with 7.7 .7 at an angle of minus 134.7 degrees. All right, going back to the top equation here, our KCL equation, it should be the case that 8.28 at an angle of minus 169 should equal, I'll put a little question mark over there, um, should equal 4.78 at 124.6 plus 7.7 .7 at an angle of minus 134.7. Okay? In fact, if, um, if you run through this, you will see that this does equal. 
Notice I haven't gone back to my equations. I've gone back to the original circuit. That's really what matters here. I'm going back to the original circuit. Okay. I take this and this. I add them together and hopefully we get this. All right. And we know that KCL for that node has been satisfied. Now, I will repeat the process for node A, I'll repeat the process for node C, and if they balance out as well, then we know we have a set of values that are good. And we're happy.